Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, Jurgen Klopp's comments after the game as well in a very heated exchange with, uh, with Des Kelly where we've had um, opposition fans call him a crybaby uh, amongst other things for being fairly vocal and outspoken on um, player safety, which I think is something that we can all agree is a very important point when we're living in a COVID world now. Um, you know, when we see you know, Newcastle, for example, having their game postponed with Aston Villa just because, because they've had a you know an outbreak of their facility. Um I think one of the things None as well that we don't know okay, again man, where where are they <laughs> shouting that? I can't hear it in the distance. So they're very quiet now, isn't it? I think we sometimes underestimate how big of a mental toll this probably takes on footballers as well, as opposed to the, the physical side, just before we kind of you know, talk into that debate. Um, you know, if you're someone like Genie One Alden, you're, you're living at home probably by yourself. I know his wife and kids, they still live in uh, Holland for, for the most part. So he's, you know, he's just having to train and go home and he can't see his kids. You just focus on one thing as football. And that's got to be really mentally draining. And, you know, we don't think of that side of football really. Um, which is a little, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we're all guilty of it as football fans. At least I don't think it's the psychological effect it's having on players too, as opposed to the physical things. Um, we lost James Miller to injury in that match with a hamstring injury, and we also lost what became apparent tonight, uh, Alison Becker to a hamstring injury as well from that game. So I think <laughs> Jurgen was more within his rights to kind of have a go with Des Kelly, even though. It did feel like, you know, when you're atting someone on Twitter, like, you know, you look, you know uh, an Amazon page and Amazon admin saying, where the fucking hell is my parcel? You know, this isn't the girl, this isn't the person you should be directing your anger at. But, but you know, I've been banging my head against the wall for the better part of 18 months now that someone's going to fucking have it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's, it is a weird one. But, um, else, the actual yeah. comments themselves. Um, obviously, I think we're all in in agreement with Klopp that it made no sense playing on a Wednesday night then playing on a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, have you, 12.30. Um, the players should be afforded at least one day of rest because naturally you play on a, um, on a Wednesday, then Thursday will probably be what, a rest or you, you have a little tra- late training on the yeah. Thursday. Then Friday you get ready for the game. Then Saturday, Sunday. Which makes sense. I mean, if the game was on Tuesday, I don't think Klopp would have had a problem with playing on the Saturday because at least he's got his day of rest that he wants and he wants yeah. the preparation time. And the players need the rest because you're going to play, then you're going to come back on a Tuesday and play again. So it makes sense. Um, Gary Neville and Carrie got touched on it yesterday on um, Monday, Monday Night Football. Gary Neville was of, of the opinion that Klopp just wanted an advantage because he believes, he believes that this season is going to be tough and he wants to win the title, which might be right, but it's also like you're trying to stick. Klopp just wants everyone to stay stay fit and healthy, in it, and, uh, and and that's that's what we're looking for. Um, BT and Sky, because and the, and the thing that got me was that Everton versus Leeds was on a Saturday night. Two teams who had not played in Europe. Why are they playing on a Saturday night? Who is? Yeah. That? Well, obviously people watch Leeds and Everton, so I'm not going to say who's watching them. But I'm thinking, surely the people that watch them in the evening are going to watch them in a, a tea time anyway. Or at lunchtime, anyway. Like we're gonna watch Liverpool at any time. So it, it, yeah, it, it's 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 a it's a common sense thing, isn't it? Really, um, like just in terms of just saying when you're saying, can you when Klopp's saying, can't the broadcasters have a conversation where you, you know you just flip some of the fixture times around? Um, so when you, you know you when you're doing the the broadcast times and you just flip them around and say we're playing the evening game. Instead of the lunch time game, it just makes complete sense. Um, I did, <laughs> it would be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, uh, free subs one point, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard this year, you know, free subs one point. <laughs> so, Annick, you do want to say something about that? Uh, no, I, I wasn't going to uh, specifically say it on. Um... The three subs, one point. I, I, I was more so just. I was more so going to just, just, um, just sort of just, just, just state my view on it because uh, on on the Klopp stuff because I think what Klopp is saying, he's been consistent throughout. You know, he said it after yeah. the Man City game. He said it after the Leicester game. He said it after the midweek Champions League game. I think it's a case of every other fan picks up on it as soon as we lose. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Des Des Kelly's comments. 
didn't help and they sort Bro, of he came prepared plot. didn't he like he came for he came prepared <laughs> he, he, he came ready and 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 it's a case of you know Klopp has been consistent he's been saying this the whole time um it's not just a case of him you know wildly throwing his toys out of the pram now that you know we we haven't won um but I think also on that I think what Klopp is saying is what a lot of the other managers are thinking and it's only Klopp and and Pep that will come out and say these sort of things. Because, and Oli, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And and Oli said it as well. So I don't I don't think it's a case of our oh, Klopp's thinking different to every other manager, and he's just to his advantage. I think all the other managers are thinking the same as well, um, which no one really seems to pick up on. Yeah. And like Klopp said, there was there were fifteen or sixteen managers in that meeting that said they wanted five subs. So I don't like this whole rhetoric around Liverpool being crybabies or the manager being a crybaby because everybody is saying it. Oli's gone and said it and that's gone under the radar. Nobody's really brought that up. Look at the position. That, yeah, man, you aren't too far with us, but look at the position they're in currently compared to where they should be. Like, why are people not making that as big of a fuss? And just to go on to Ellis's point quickly as well, People don't factor in travel. We had to travel down to Brighton. So we travelled back, then travelled down to Brighton and then have to travel back up the next day. Like It's a lot. Or the same day even. It's a lot for the players to cope with. Yeah, I think in, you, you both hit the nail on the head there, really. It's, it's, it's a lot for the players to cope with and the fact that people only really do pick on pick up on it when, when we're when we've lost the game or we've dropped points and they really kind of amplify that situation where in, in realistic terms, it's something the club just bangs on about for the past 18 months. Um, you know, he's, he's gone on about the Christmas schedule since he was hey, like in his first season. Down, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, this he, isn't new to us. It's it's new, like, he said that he couldn't understand why they play so many games. He couldn't understand why there's two knockout competitions. And to this day, I don't understand why there's two knockout competitions. For the life of me, I don't understand. For the life of me, I don't I don't understand why the EFL believe that they're so important that they can't move a game backward or forward so that Liverpool can, can play and then go to to Dubai or World Cup. Yeah. 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 For the life, I don't know why in England that they feel that they're so important that they can't leave traditions alone. Like fam, your traditions Honestly, haven't man. It hasn't served you well since 1966. Like everyone is leaving you in your wake in football. Why are you still doing the same things? What is happening? Like sometimes I sit down and I watch English football. I'm thinking, what is going on? Like, why do you not think you're the like the best of the best? And anyway, that's the topic for another day. I know why, but we're not going to get into that today. <laughs> and one last thing just on that. Hashtag ab- yeah, come on, man. <laughs> hashtag abolish what Chris go ahead. As a hashtag abolish the league up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man. Honestly, honestly. But um, just a quick point. So we remember Ajax getting to the semi-finals of the Champions League. They banned, the, sorry, they postponed the Aegis Feld or the Dutch League for that weekend just to allow Ajax that advantage. So why can't the English team, similar to what Elle said, move games around dependent just to give themselves the best chance of having continental success or being powerhouses? Like we claim this is the best league in the world and ideally to me it is. But when you're not comp- when you're not performing at a high level in continental football or in international football, then what can you say? What standout qualities do you have? Yeah, I think everyone will be crying with the Euros next year. And I think, in my opinion as well, I don't think an English team will um, win the Champions League this season either just because of the scheduling issues. 